Hey there, Hofstra fans, and welcome inside the WB Mason Coaches Report on GoHofstra.com. I'm Julian Coulter, joined by the head coach of the Hofstra Pride Field Hockey Team, Cavity the Angeles. Coach, thanks for joining us. Great being here. Well, first thing, only one game last week. Another CAA matchup for you guys, so trying to move to 2-0 and in the conference. It was against a top-ranked Drexel team in the NCAA. How did you think you guys did? Well, we had a, gr a great game. It was really unfortunate. Um, they capitalized and scored two goals in the first nine and a half minutes of play. Shocked us, caught us off guard. Uh, they were great goals, and um, you know we came back. We had a great second half. Really proud of our second half effort. But unfortunately, it was too late, and um, we just couldn't find the back of the net. But it was. It, we had some great, great opportunities, some great performances by some players, and that, that's what I'm taking away from this game. You look at the box score, kind of a mediocre first half of action, but you guys were very good in the second half. What do you attribute that to? Well, I really attribute to our midfield. Our midfield really, really connected with our attack line. Uh, we got on the scoreboard, which was great. Um, had some really nice performances on the striker line, um, particularly with Lauren Devaye. Really, really happy with her field play. It was a great goal off of Janelle. Uh, Claudia Samper also had a, a nice, nice um, unassisted goal. I think what was great in the second half was our connection between the midfield and the striker line. Um, I do have to credit uh, the defense of the Drexel because they were so strong and they any opportunity that we, we had, they, they stopped us. And, um, you know, we, we need to play better and we need to play stronger. Certainly we're playing the number 19 team in the country. Now, as far as the way that this team is ranked, you kind of told us all season that you used your out-of-conference schedule with these top-ranked teams, including the number one team in the country in Maryland, top five team in Syracuse, teams like University of Richmond, University of New Hampshire, to prepare yourself for these CAA games in which you're playing top-ranked opponents. Drexel, you mentioned number 19 in the country. Do you think you guys were ready? Oh, absolutely. Like I said, they scored two goals in the first nine minutes. We weren't ready then. But um, the rest of the game, we were, we competed, we had several opportunities, um, some great corner attack op opportunities, but their defense, and certainly on their uh, defensive corner unit for Drexel, was one of the best that we have seen all year round. And so, again, I'm going to accredit the, their defense. But um, we were prepared, and we had every opportunity uh, to, to make something happen, and we didn't find the back of the net, but we need to do that. Right. We need well, to do that soon. Yeah, absolutely. Let's spotlight a couple of players. One that you mentioned right off the bat was Lauren Del Valle, and she was somebody that earlier on in the season, just coming off the bench a little bit, getting her minutes, but as of late has really found the score sheet in the past couple of games. What kind of things has she been able to do out there? Well, she, she works extremely well, uh, number one with Janelle, our, our leader on the attack line. Uh, they connect extremely well, and I think that makes it such an easy slide uh, when she comes um, off the bench. And, um, and, and she, does, she, does, um, uh, she also works extremely well with the other strikers, which is, which is important, and they're all very similar with, with speed and how they move the ball. Um, it was great that she found the back of the net, and she's been in so many close opportunities and, and been in the right place at the right time and just unfortunately just hasn't connected. But um, uh, she really, really uh, stepped her game up, and um, I thought that her performance was, was fantastic, and we're really hoping that she can continue to push for the rest of the season because we're going to need her and, uh, as, as all the strikers, but it was great. Now, Claudia Samper, one of these fantastic freshmen, I guess you can say, that really just stepped right into it in their first year here. She was able to get on the score sheet again, something that she's really done, but she's also been very nice in the midfield as well, kind of helped them move the ball. What do you like about the way that she plays in the game? Well, she has very good technical skill and um, she reads the play very well. Uh, she is interchangeable in the midfield. Um, you know, we can put her there when we need to in certain, certain spots, but in, in her midfield play on the striker line, she's very smart and, and she generally gets the call, which is really important, so she comes out to win a lot of the times. Um, but her circle play is one of the best that we do have. Uh, we haven't got the ball to her that often. Some of the stronger matches, certainly Maryland and uh, UNH, um, and that's just the, because of the uh, games we're playing. But she is very, very strong in the attacking circle. So when we do get her in the ball, she has great, great prolific scoring ability in the circle. And as you can see, um, she had a stellar goal um, in uh, Sunday's match. Uh, and she's also, she's very, very quick. And one of the things she's also helping, helping us on is our defensive corner unit. She's our number one flyer at the moment. And she's doing a great job reading the play, which is important, not just being quick getting out there, but reading the play. 
Uh, but, you know, we're really happy how she's performing and she's continuing to get better. Now, last year, Coach, and coming into this season, one of the big question marks obviously was the offense. But at this point, you look at some of the players that have scored goals, and they're doing it consistently. Of course, Janelle Boyle, Stella Schoen, one freshman from Germany, Claudia Samper, and then Lauren Del Valle have all contributed on the score sheet. So this has to be a little bit of a luxury for you at this point. Yeah, we're, we're really happy. And um, last year, we were dependent on one or two players, really just one, mostly Janelle. And now um, we've got other players who can score and stepping up, and we're uh, I think we're still leading the, the uh, CAA in shots. We need to get better shot selection. We need better percentage of our shots. So that's something we're still working with and having a young team. It's going to take some t take some time to develop their skill set at the Division One level. But it is getting better, and there's so much improvement. And um, you know where where we are at right now with this young team. I mean, I couldn't be happier. Uh, we're hoping to get a little bit of luck and, and, and play as strong as we can throughout the rest of the rest of the uh, last few weeks of the season. Now you have two conference games in the book right now. You get the victory up at Northeastern to put you guys at 1-0, and but then you fall here at home to Drexel, so you're at 1-1 one and one right now. Through two games, of course, the top four teams make the conference tournament. Do you think you're at the point where you want to be right now? And if you're not, what do you have to do to get there in the CAA? Well, we're at a, we're at a good place right now, and that is we're really competing. I mean, I, it was a huge win for us over Northeastern up there in Boston. And, uh, and also to score five goals and be completely resilient in a game like that. So we know that we have we have the capability. I think right now when you have a young team, it is about maintaining that and, and really getting the players from a coaching perspective to believe in themselves and believe, hey, we can do this, we can be there. And um, right now it's about keeping our heads up in the air and not beating ourselves up over this loss. I mean, Drexel is a solid team. They're picked number one in our league. They have an amazing, their strength of schedule is, is equal, if not stronger than ours. And um, again, you know, when they're a top 20 team and they've almost broken top 10 early, early in the year, we put up a great fight, and um, so we know we can compete with them, and we know, well, and we're hoping really that we can see them again. But we're going to have to do, do uh, make make some changes just in being able to maintain that type of pressure um, at that level for 70 minutes. And if we can do that, I know we can get ourselves a championship. Now, another kind of, I guess you could say, light work week, even though you are taking on a, another very impressive team in the University of Albany. So when it comes to your matchup this weekend, what sort of things, scouting report-wise, can you give us on that? Well, um, they really, they're having a great year, and they're winning a lot of games, and they're, um, they're also uh, playing, they have such a strength of schedule as well. Um, they're a common opponent. We play them every year, and um, you know, so, so we know their ability. They have a great... Uh, their other players are extremely skilled, uh, very skilled and very dangerous. But um, and that being said, we we've, we've faced this team before. We face them every year. When they, we always have a very good game against them. Um, and, and we're excited to play them at home, really. Now, Coach, what's the big thing in practice-wise that you guys are going to work out? Kind of transitioning from CAA play to this kind of non-conference game, smack dab in the middle of it. Right. Well, really, at this point, it is about... Uh, our continue our preparation and our mentality focus in practice. It is huge. Uh, to when you have a younger team, it's it's very easy to when you're in the matches we're, we are mentally and and physically prepared. But when we get into the practice, it's about continuing to maintain that type of focus. And, and at this point in the year, it's a little bit more difficult uh, with, with midterms coming up. But we have such a dedicated uh, group right now that um, they, they're really staying focused. But it, it is my job, and it's, it's you know the leaders on the team and the upperclassmen to really push the younger guys to keep them focused. And if we can do that and, and have some strong practices throughout, I think we're gonna I think we're gonna really shine in the rest of the CAA games. Finally, coach, what do you have to do? Pick up that victory this weekend. Well, it's continue to play as a team, and i um, said that from day one, it's not about any one individual player. It's about every player on this team giving huge effort and staying focused. Coach, thanks so much. Great, great to you. Remember, Hofstra fans, you can tune into the W.B. Mason Coaches Report each and every week right here on GoHofstra.com.